I remember syrup sandwiches and crumb allowances Finna see a nigga with some counterfeits Now I'm counting this okay. Our next performer is from the US But, I mean, like, originally from a Middle Eastern country that I forgot about uh, Well, this is the thing, like, he, he's a musician But obviously it didn't work out, so he's doing comedy now uh, <laughs> This is this introduction probably longer than his CV. Please welcome with me, Arya. <laughs> All right, how are you everybody doing? How's it going? Are you guys well? I'm actually from Iran, so I guess technically I'm not an Arab. I know this is called the Arabs aren't funny. The Arabs are coming, you know. You gotta wait for them. They'll show up, you know. So I'm not exactly an Arab, right? But I'm kind of an Arab, right? Iranians are kind of Arabs, right? Like, they get really offended, though, if you call them Arab. They go, oh, no, I'm not Arab. I'm Persian. I'm from Persia. And it's like, yeah, where is Persia? Is it in the middle of Middle East where, like, all the Arabs live? Because that sounds like, you know, we've been, we've been in this region for, like, 2,000 years. We've all, like, mixed together. Nobody knows who's who anymore, you know? I gotta look at my notes every once in a while just to, you know, not lose track of things. But I've been living in Istanbul for seven years. It's a pretty cool place, you know. I wanted to leave Iran, kind of leave like the nationalism there and, you know, the prejudice. I wanted to be more free. So, you know, moving to Turkey wasn't... It was kind of a weird choice, right? If you want to get away from nationalism. That's like, that's like moving to Vegas to get over your gambling addiction. <laughs> It's just not gonna work out, right? It's gonna be terrible. All right, everybody's waking up, I love this, all right. But Istanbul's cool, it's a cool place to live in, especially if you're a cat, right? They're like the cutest, <laughs> they're the cutest like colonizers of Istanbul in history, if you know your history. I don't, but I know it's been colonized a while, but cats, you know, humans, humans are like the worst predators, right? We kill all kinds of animals. But cats and dogs, they kind of have convinced us that they're not delicious or something. I don't know, I don't know why we let them live, you know? But they're cute, they're kind of, you know, they're okay. I'm glad that we don't kill them. People, uh, you know, people in Istanbul take care of cats. It's very touching. I really love that about Turkish people. They take care of street animals. Like Istanbul is the only city in the world where you'll see like a cat house, right? With cute cats in it. And like right next to it, there's a homeless guy. Everybody's ignoring him. No one cares, right? <laughs> but yeah, you know, like, and people get really mad about that too, right? They go like, oh, how can you care so much about animals when there are people starving? And it's like, have you met people? Like, clearly animals are like way better than people in every way conceivable, you know? Cats make really good companions. I used to have a cat who was really cute, like very sociable. Just a little, you know, kitty kitty walking around the house. One Halloween, I dressed him up as the Schrodinger's cat, by which I mean I locked him in a box with a vial of poison. <laughs> <laughs> These are, oh, somebody said what happened to the cat. Well, I guess for a while I had two cats, right? One of them was dead, one of them was alive. <laughs> These are, uh, these are, these are quantum physics jokes, people. You gotta keep up, you know? All right, quantum physics. All right. But yeah, you know, and then there are people who go, well, if you love animals so much, why do you kill and eat them? Which is like, you know, that's wrong. I'll give you that. But they're also pretty delicious, you know, like, so, you know, like for me, it's like, I never killed an animal, right? The meat industry did. I never killed an animal. I never laid hands on an animal. Butchers killed them. I just kind of buy their flesh. Otherwise, they would rot. I'm practically doing them a favor if you think about it. That's the way I justify it to myself anyway, right? But like, if we kind of had to go back to when humans actually hunted for meat themselves, like if we actually, like if I actually had to like hunt for animals myself, which I don't know like what motion this is. Like I guess it's a spear because it's the 11th century or something. I don't know. But if I had to like run after animals and hunt them, I'd probably be a vegetarian. I'd be, I'm more of the gatherer type, you know, I, I won't make a good hunter. I smoke, you know, I faint at the sight of blood immediately. So even if I like catch an animal that's too slow, there's no way I can kill him, right? And like at the same time, like, 
I feel like running is the worst thing you can do ever. I hate running. Running is the worst thing. Like, I watched Usain Bolt run 100 meters in nine and a half seconds. And to me, like, the most amazing thing about that is that, wow, this guy can run for nine and a half seconds. Because <laughs> for me, it's like, I can walk, I can run for like five seconds, then I just like turn around and like surrender to whatever is chasing me. <laughs> like, but yeah, Istanbul is, you know, it's a cool place for humans too, not only for cats. It's a very kind of like a diverse place, right? Like looking at all of you, we got Easterners, we got Westerners. I think Istanbul became like this because it's a city that gives nobody in the world a culture shock. Like nobody is shocked by anything here, right? Like if you're a Westerner, you come here, the buildings are cute. There's a McDonald's on every street. You know, it's familiar, right? And if you're an Easterner, it's very nostalgic. Like the roads are all uneven. Everybody... <laughs> Everybody drives like a maniac, you know. At any point when I'm in any car in Istanbul, I'm like so ready for death. It's ridiculous, right? But to me, like the thing that like gets me the most nostalgic, like when I feel the most at home, is at the Fatih Emniyet, you know, when you go to get your residence. <laughs> it's just like uh, the, like the slow death of like bureaucracy and paperwork, you know. Like, I'm pretty sure somebody in the Middle East actually has a solution to peace in the Middle East. But they're just like stuck filing it, you know? But yeah, so, you know, so we're used to that part, but Turkey like actually takes bureaucracy kind of, it takes it up a notch. Cause it's like the rest of the Middle East, except you can't even bribe anybody. Are you kidding me? Like, if you're gonna be slow, at least have the decency to also be corrupt so I can bribe my way out of this. There's always like so many steps. You gotta get like your landlord to like adopt you, <laughs> right? Gotta get like a signature from the president or something. There's always like one time slot available at 5 p.m. but they actually close at 4 p.m. So it's like, why am I, you know, what am I doing here, you know? They like, it feels like they design it to be very inefficient. You know, it's like, they don't want you to be here. So they're basically telling you like, hey, we don't want you here. You want to be here. Let's see who caves first. Like in the, <laughs> in like the slowest way, like it's the slowest way to fight somebody, right? It's like watching two people try to kill each other with a spoon. It's just like, <laughs> the other guy goes, it's, you know, it's very slow, right? To me, like the thing that like summarizes the whole like bureaucracy in Turkey story was in 2012, I was at the Fatih Emniyet, I was getting my residence permit renewed. And I see Drogba there, right? The famous football player. I guess the men would know who Drogba is. But yeah, he was a famous football player. He signed to Galatasaray. So, you know, like, I'm waiting in line. I'm a nobody, right? So I'm just waiting. This just sucks, right? Like, it's really hot. Nobody's paying attention to me. Nobody's, like, nobody ever pays attention to the numbers there, right? Like, everybody's just rushing the main tail, trying to get their thing done. And so I look over, like I see this guy, he's Drogba, he's like a national treasure, you know. He used to play for Chelsea and he's just standing there going, I don't, know where to, I don't know where to go, you know, I don't know what to do. So finally somebody like sees him, they come over, you know, like they freak out, they just come like yank him out of the queue. They take him to the front, he gets to skip the line, so that's cool. Like, you know, okay, this guy like, met, you know, paid for a lot of hospitals and schools, helped the poor, you know, with the money he made from football. But I was here first, you know? Uh, I wanna get out of here, you know? So they're taking a selfie with Drogba, you know, they're like, the police officer is like, oh, he's like so excited. Drogba is just like, just like trying to muster up any kind of excitement, you know, in this like horrific place. So then he gets done, he leaves, right? And I go to the front, the officer looks at me. It says like Iranian on my document. So it goes, Iran me, Iraq me. <laughs> you know, I guess he was all, like making sure that I also don't confuse my home country <laughs> with another country, right? So I go, no, it's Iran. Like, I'm pretty sure I nailed the difference between these two countries because I was born in one of them. So then he goes, like, he gets all jokey about it. Like, he's in a good mood, like, so he's just like, Iran me terrorist, Iraq me terrorist. 
Like, what do you say to that, you know? Like, I want to tell him that's ignorant, that's racist, doesn't even really make sense as a sentence. Iran me terrorist, Iraq me terrorist, right? But I can't, like, he's in a good mood, he just took a selfie with Drogba, you know? I want to get my stuff done, I want to get out of here, right? Like, I don't have time to, like, correct this guy. So I just kind of, like, shrug it off. But, like, that story is, like, in the back of my head, you know? It happened, like, five years ago. I still think about it, like, every day. I'm like, you don't want to tell me this? You don't want to tell me this? I don't know. I don't know. You know? Generally, like, I'm very bothered by the stereotype that Middle Easterns are terrorists. Because we're not really the kind of people who, like, believe in the whole you can be whatever you want thing. <laughs> You know, you can't tell your Middle Eastern parents you want to be a terrorist. Can't even tell them you want to be an artist. They're like, what are you doing? Just go, go study engineering or medicine, you know? The new ones are like, there are a couple other things they let you do, you know? Like, show of hands, I know there's a lot of Middle Easterns here. Like, raise your hand if you're Middle Eastern and you're studying engineering or medicine, or if you work in this field. Wow, that's it? I thought there'd be more. I guess that's because also, like, nowadays people can also study economics and business. So if I said that, I'd probably get, like, half of the room here. But yeah, somehow, you know, we study all these, like, things that nobody else studies, you know. Everybody's doing, like, social sciences, things like that. We're, we're sticking to the engineering and the medicine, right? But it's like, show the average person a Middle Eastern terrorist and just go, oh, that's so typical. It's like, how is that typical? Like, that is not what typical means. There's maybe what, like two, three thousand terrorists ever, right? I don't know if that's like enough to create a whole stereotype based on like a billion people on it, you know? And I think, you know, well, people are racist, like what are you gonna do? Uh, we were taught racism as kids, right? Like in school and stuff, they taught us to hate each other. I really, I kind of grew out of that, right? Now I just kind of hate everybody from, you know, regardless of ethnicity and race, I think. People are just not my cup of tea, you know? And so I guess you could say that I have a dream. I have a dream that one day we will stop discriminating against each other based on gender and race and religion, you know? And just start hating each other because I think that's the way, that's the way forward, you know? Anyway, I guess that's my time. You guys have been great. Stay tuned for more comedy. Bye!